Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame and this is the recap review for Pose. So yeah, I know I'm quite late <laughs> uh, doing these recap reviews because there were two episodes that came on Sunday night, but I had to work and the weather has been very ridiculous here. And uh, y'all know about the other situation. The person's still been setting it off for like six days now with their lawnmower. But anyway, before I get into the recap review, y'all, I have a package here. Yeah, I, I have a package that I've received. And I just wanted to show y'all how serious I am about, about these black-owned businesses. Like, I am so serious. I'm opening it up now um, to show y'all. But remember when I told y'all, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to have to actually, I need to start putting the links to these other videos in the description box. But if y'all never saw my spotlight segment that I put on a black owned business by the name of Play Pits, where you can find them at playpits.com. You can find them on Instagram under the name Play Pits. But yeah, just smelling the bag is amazing. But yeah, she has this in here. And uh, it's a deodorant. Now, I purchased six this time of Queen. Queen is the only one that I've ever used. This is literally the only deodorant that I have ever used in my entire life that has worked. And I have been wearing deodorant since I was what, nine years old, whatever. Like when puberty hit, I guess you could say. Well, probably before that, but yeah, you know. Puberty hit. I have six in here, y'all. I already had three prior to this, and I'm on the third one now. So I re-up, and I have these, <laughs> and I have six of them. So yeah, uh, yeah, y'all. I ain't playing no games. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. And this smells amazing. I bought the box she had, and I did the little. You know, I showed y'all what that looked like too. But yes, please head on over to playpits.com. They have this for the women. They have King. There are women who wear King as well. She even said that's basically her favorite fragrance. And there were other ones that are inspired by her children. And, you know, I don't know if I ever plan on trying those, but I love Queen. Queen is everything. I already tell her all the time that she needs to make it into a fragrance and sell it because I would be one of the first ones in line to buy it if she ever made it into a body oil uh, uh, perfume or whatever. But yeah, support black owned businesses. This one is well worth it. This product actually works. I use it every single day. It's everything. So anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get on into this recap review. So the episode starts out and we hear sirens everywhere. People are scattering and I'm looking like, okay, what happened? Yes, it's 1994, but anything could be going on. And they are in New York, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm like, okay, again, there could be anything that is going on as to why everybody is scattering. Y'all, to make a long story short, they have raided the place where Electra works, which is Hellfire Club. And y'all know that's a club where a lot of people are into a lot of kinky things. And, you know, whether they're married or not, they go up in there and do what they do. So that's what's going on. Well, they done shut that down, and y'all know that's where she get all her money from. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's she going to do? <laughs> Unless she's going to start trying to somehow hope that she still... I hope she has the numbers of these people, because these people be really living for her. They, The people really live for her. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it is what it is. So, uh, moving right along, the place is shut down, and now... One of her former children, he has started his own house. And yeah, that man be doing the most. And I mean, he was amazing when he did what he was doing for her house. But he at one of the little balls and he done rolled up on everybody and told everybody to get out the room because his people needed to get dressed and all this. And now he trying to make it seem like, oh, well, what we going to do is we going to fight it out on the floor for money. And they looking like, what is we talking about? Blanca ain't really got nothing going on. All of her children, but Damon have left. So 
Because, you know, Angel and Poppy, they together and engaged and all this other stuff. And everybody is gone. All the children, whether they were new to the fold or not, everybody is gone except for Damon. So, now we see Pray Tell judging the situation. And he has had to let everybody know that there is a new situation that is upon them. They are going to give out like $500 to the people who win the competition and people feel like it's not fair how you gonna change the rules at the last second because there's a house that had already performed and did their little routine and they really thought they had it in the bag until old boy came out of nowhere and his people came and set it off. Now in my mind, I'm like, okay, what is going on here? Pray telling them don't hardly have money for nothing. So what is they talking about? And we'll get to that later on. So anyway, the folks end up winning Pray tell and the other MCs are at their usual eating spot. And so old boy rolled up on him with his house and was basically like, where my, where my money at though? Where my money at? <laughs> oh, and then they figured out, oh, y'all must not have him. What we not finna do is that. And before they even got there, it's hilarious because one of the MCs was like, oh, these people don't play. They have rolled up on people before and beat them down for less. So what you're not going to do is play with these people's money. And then they rolled up. I was like, oh my gosh, no. We all, they got into a whole food fight. And, you know, like I said, they figured out that they ain't had no money. Like the most of them went down. Anyway, Blanca is living her best life. She living better than most of us. I'm just like, yes, Lord, Blanca, I am here for it. She deserves all the happiness that she getting. So she bathed up with her man at his place. They met when they were at the hospital because she like volunteers at the hospital with a lot of the patients who have AIDS and HIV and all that stuff. And like she really is a ray of sunshine. And, you know, she has purpose. She feels as though she has purpose now, even though she was a nail owner and all this other stuff, you know, a nail salon owner. She feels fulfilled when she is doing these things for the people who are around her, especially the ones who they feel hopeless. So she was meeting up. Uh, later on, she's going to meet up with somebody that's at the hospital. I'm trying to see what the man's name is, if I can see it. I don't see it on here, but uh, I don't want to say it wrong. But anyway, her man is there, and he lives for her. And I'm just like, yes, Lord. I'm, I'm very, very happy for Blanca, but... You know, it, 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 it's vibe. I'm like, well, excuse me, Blanca. Because, I mean, we saw her happy before, but I didn't know if any of that was going to last. And she didn't know if it was going to last because, you know, they had gone out of town or, like, went upstate or wherever they went to go to the beach and some stuff popped off last season or whatever between her and a dude. And, you know, so everything is still going strong. Cool. Okay. Well, Poppy is at work doing what he do. And Angel done rolled up and she and her feelings because she sees him talking to a receptionist or whatever it is she is. And y'all know this heifer is back on drugs and she doing the most and she acting real skittish. And it's like, girl, bye. Yes, the woman was giving body and was looking the way she's supposed to look, especially in 1994. She had the big hair, you know, basically her without curly hair. And it's like, girl, calm down. And he had to tell her, girl, if you don't go somewhere and sit down, you know I only live for you. I ain't looked at another woman since I've been with you. Like, what is you talking about? Like, Poppy really do live for her. So I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? And I don't understand. I understand that you in your feelings because you have not had work in over a year. But he making such good money that that place they live in is like, girl, shut up. Continue to try to book stuff. Ain't no reason for you to sit up here and relapse and do all of that. I understand being depressed and in your feelings, but he, he gives so much amazing encouragement and he lives for her to the point where I'm like, I don't understand how you find the time to even allow your mind to backslide into that type of thinking and then act on it. But this heifer is slowly slipping back into darkness. Like girl, bye. Don't nobody have time. So anyway, Pray tell and the other uh, MCs are at a funeral. Somebody has passed away. It's a young man who used to be at the balls and like he had like just performed at a ball like a month or less prior. And he was like in his 20s, like 25. And pray tell is tied in his spirit and he is a drunk. 
Like, I understand he and his feelings and he feels very hopeless about his diagnosis, but it's just to the point where he treats his boyfriend terrible, who y'all know is Ricky, who was the hoe who Damon was with. And then he just was out here still fighting and bopping. And then they all went and got tested. And then all of a sudden, both of them got, you know, AIDS, HIV. But Damon luckily didn't have nothing to my recollection. And I'm just like, girl, girl, you done did the most. Ricky just be out here just fighting and bopping. I'm so sick and tired. But anyway, pray tell at the funeral drinking down, he done pulled out a little mini flask. I'm like, boy, he was at work doing the most. He like he works at like Macy's or somewhere, like some department store, uh, trying to get people to buy certain fragrances. And then while he in the middle of trying to do that, he pull out a flask and turn to the turn his back and start swigging there. I'm like, we not swigging alcohol at work, sir. Yeah, like he doing the most. Cause I was really trying to figure out like how he gonna get his money, cause he don't do nothing. I mean, I don't think the balls and stuff pay like that. So I'm like, uh-uh. Ballroom don't don't pay y'all like that. So how you paying for your apartment, sir? Anyway, so like I told y'all earlier, Blanca is very, very encouraging to the patients at this hospital that she goes to that she met old boy at. And, you know, there's somebody there who goes by the name of Cubby. And he used to be very big on the ballroom scene. And you could tell he's really seriously withering away and he has his condition is so bad that he's gone blind and Blanca is just so so encouraging I live for it and you know and that's despite her diagnosis because y'all know she got you know she got what she got going on too so anyway she in there and encouraging him and he's in his feelings because he hasn't seen his mama in a long time his mama was not understanding of the fact that he was gay and he started to, you know, reminisce back on her telling him that you being gay, you, you ain't had no business being gay, you gonna end up catching a disease. And then he feels like she's right because of the fact that he ended up actually getting, contracting something. And I'm like, come on now. Come on now. So Blanca is having a moment with that woman who, you know, that white woman. I don't never remember. Let me see what her name is. I got her name up here. With... Nurse Judy. She having a conversation with Nurse Judy and, you know, they like how how amazingly well she works with everybody that's there. And, you know, it's just, it's hard to see it. And she hasn't spoken to Pray Tell. And, like, they haven't been talking. He won't answer the phone. He won't answer the door. So the whole situation is just crazy because they are, like, the best of friends. Everybody know he going through and it's like, what can we even do if he won't even talk to nobody? So they talking. Well, Ricky at the house, Ricky, I guess he works somewhere uh, where they sell chicken. I don't remember if they, they showed that last season or not, but pray tell they came in the house and Ricky upset because he came in the house and he barely say, hey, how you doing to him? And he was like, what crawled up your butt? And he was like, I'm just sick and tired of you. Like, you know, you wrong. You don't never appreciate me. Like, like Ricky tired. Cause he really sat up there and like everything else outside of the chicken, he sat up there and he slaved over the stove and made for him. And then he ended up getting on the phone. Now keep in mind, this is 1994. I don't know how many of y'all were around <laughs> quote unquote when all this was going down, but um, they were kind of in the middle of an argument. Or it was about to pop off when Blanca called him and was like, are you watching the TV if you're not turning it on right now? And this is when the Bronco chase happened with OJ Simpson. And, you know, that whole situation was a mess because he, look, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like he was lucky that he had Johnny Cochran as a lawyer. Everybody in their mama knew if you want to get off, you better have enough money to get book. Make sure you have him on retainer, Johnny V. Cochran, because he was the one making it happen for everybody. And, you know, they had this chase. And I remember when it was on TV, even though I was just, what, 10 years old, I still remember that. That was crazy. Uh, but, yeah, they had a chase. The people was chasing him because they suspected he was the one who killed his wife. What was her name? Nicole Murphy Brown. Uh, I don't know. I, I forgot the woman's name. I probably just said her name all the way wrong. But anyway, um, 
Nicole Simpson, whatever. Um, but yeah, let Chase out. Everybody, their mom was like, and you know, they actually have brought Broncos back and they be doing the most with these vehicles sometimes. I be, I thought that was going to fizzle all the way out after this happened. But yeah, I think they brought Broncos back. So anyway, yeah, everybody is like here for that. So Bron Blanca is calling everybody their mama like, are you watching this? Da -da -da -da, this is what's going on. So the heifer angel at the house with the, the drug addict, Lulu, and this heifer lighting up a blunt or whatever you want to say it is that is laced with crack, cocaine, or whatever. And she was like, oh, it's got a little kick to it. She was like, what are you crazy? And then, and like, she wasn't going to hit it. And then was like, well, I got stuff I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a job. I ain't had a job in a while. I can't be on that. Poppy don't want me on that. Girl, you know your man ain't here for none of this drug mess. He done been there with you through it all, and you still want to be a fool. But then she sat up there and still partook. So she back out here doing the most. And Lulu be looking like a fool most of the time. When she don't have on no makeup, she be told all the way down to the ground, and she be losing weight. And it's like, girl, it has to stop. But they doing the most, right? I'm just so sick and tired. I'm just like, girl, I can't with, with Lulu. But anyway, um... So, like I said, you know, Blanca is calling everybody and telling them what's going on. Well, when she called Angel, of course, Angel don't know nothing about him. And, you know, Lulu knew about him because of some of the movies and stuff he's been in. So, they ended up meeting over at Blanca's house. Everybody ended up going over to Blanca's house, including the fighting couple, uh, Ricky and Braytail. And Damon was at the house already. Cool. Tell me why everybody then congregated at the house and... Pray tell is told all the way down and he's still trying to drink some more and he acting a fool up in there. So Damon was like, uh, pray, I got something I got to show you in my room. So he acting like a typical drunk to my son. Oh, you got something to show me in your room. And then he act like he's snitching to my son. Ricky, Damon got something he got to show me in his room. And I'm just like, bro, you know, you wrong. Like, why would you think he would try to do anything with you? First of all, and I mean, I'm not trying to shade him. I'm just saying, like, you are with his ex. Like, the fact that they even have squashed their, you know, beef because it was bad last season. Like, stop. So, anyway, he's trying to encourage him, and he brought something to him, and he was showing him some book or whatever. And pray tell did not take well to what he was saying to him and went off and went on by his business. He ain't trying to hear nobody say he just want to drink his alcohol and be done. So, everybody is getting their life watching this mess Electra of one, uh, one of the main ones setting it off she living for the the docu all, all all of this uh this uh I had the word I don't know why <laughs> how do I forgot what I was gonna say but anyway she get her entire life watching this because somebody tried to say something about him and read him and she went all the way off about OJ Simpson I was like girl no so the only person who was missing at the time was Poppy. He be he be working. He really do be out here working. So he came to the house. He had like five, six big, large pizzas and all of that. So they're still watching this this uh this this situation. And it just got to the point where they're talking. And Blanca was tired of her spirit. And you know, the chase actually ended. And they trying to see if he going to get shot or what's going to happen. And then Blanca was just tired of the foolishness and just turned it off and was like, it's time for dinner. Everybody set the table, whatever, whatever. So now they talking and, you know, they trying to have a family moment and she's in her feelings because she misses that. And that's what she was talking about with nurse Judy earlier in the episode, because she ain't really got nothing going on when she leave the house, you know, outside of her man, she misses being a mother because Damon don't really need her like that. And when she get up in the morning, she literally will leave that man's house, go by her apartment to see, you know, how Damon doing. She did that early in the episode. Damon wasn't even there. Like she sets it off for everybody before she go into work, which is, you know, volunteering or whatever that she doing. I don't know if they paying her for what she doing. In my opinion, she volunteering right now or, you know, they, it's a little, you know, I don't know. They might pay her a little bit. But anyway, like she's setting it off and like she misses having the kids around. And so Judy was like, well, you seem like you are empty nesting and all this other stuff. Cool, whatever. So anyway, everybody in their feelings and they at the table talking and 
Pray tell already said earlier in the episode that he's retiring and don't nobody know. He told the MCs that the other MCs and they was just like, uh, first of all, didn't nobody tell you that you could retire. We ain't vote on that. What you talking about? He was like, well, it is what it is. I'm retiring. I'm tired. It's just too much going on. Everybody down all around me. Pray tell ain't here for nothing. So anyway, at this point, don't nobody know what's going on. But now that they're at the table discussing all this stuff, and Electra is like, you know, we need to get this ball situation going again. We need to start doing what we was doing before because that was the thing to do. So, y'all, praise hell ain't here for it. And again, don't nobody know, especially nobody there. Nobody knows that he has retired. Well, Blanca is uh, about to get ready to go and meet her man's folks. And they don't know that her son... They, the, the the mama and daddy don't know that their son is dating a trans woman. Okay? So, she's kind of nervous. And at first, she was like, oh, no, I don't know about all this. But this is the night that they're supposed to meet. Well, she ends up getting a phone call. And I already knew what it was as soon as she said what she said. So, Cubby is in the process of dying. And um, she had already arranged prior to this when she met up with Cubby earlier in the episode for his mama to come and she was like your mother loves you very much whatever whatever he wasn't trying to hit it and he was like no she don't she shunned me and all this other stuff and it's like a lot of people don't understand that the way that you grew up thinking and being taught something was supposed to be it's hard for people to let those values go and to let that way of thinking go and try to hear you out and to try to understand what you are telling them so the mama came. He didn't want to see her, but the mama came and saw him. Well, now he's dying and the mama is there and all of, you know, the whole family, everybody that's always around Blanca, they're there to watch him pass away. Well, old boy that was a part of the House of Evangelista who has his own house now, he's supposed to be in there. Well, Cubby end up passing away. And when they leave out the room, child, they get into it with him. And he told myself, how dare you? I don't want to hear nothing you got to say, Blanca. Why you ain't tell me? Why you ain't tell me it was important? Because he tried to make it seem like he had something else better, something else basically better than he had to do something else that was more important. And so they looking like, why are you saying that that's more important than being here for him? And so Blanca had to set it off. She was like, I've been telling you for months or for weeks that you needed to get up here and see him. Y'all, oh my gosh. Tell me why. <laughs> Prince Hell set it all the way off. They got to fight in the hallway. I said, oh, Lord, it was so bad. So, Lord, he finally went up in there. The man dead. He done climbed up in the bed with him and, you know, having his little moment with him alone. But I'm like, you should have been there when he was taking his last breath. But who am I? Y'all, so the way it is, is they all decided that what they were going to do was they were going to settle their differences, differences the way that they always usually do, which is ballroom. So, at first, wasn't nobody here for it. And then they were just like, okay, let's do it for Cubby. And that's the only reason why they did what they did. So, I was like, okay, let's see how it go. Lord, when I tell you, House of Evangelista set it all the way off. They won every category. I Look, I wasn't expecting it. And it's funny because, like, when they first came on and they did a ballroom situation, um... Angel was in her feelings because it's a new girl that's out here. She is very beautiful. And Pray Tell was reading. And he was like, this looks very familiar. You know, something something very familiar that used to happen. And he was reading. He was talking about, we used to see somebody like this before. And they were, they were, they were named Angel. Like, he was reading. And she was right there. Like, she was very offended, which she should have been. But anyway, like I said, everybody said it all. I do like the fact that they did have a moment. And it was either the first uh, ballroom situation they showed earlier in the episode or in this one where they did Candy's reprise. Uh, is that what it's called? Candy's reprise? But yeah, I'm glad they still implement that. They really do hold that high because y'all know Candy passed away last uh, season. So yeah, y'all. I was like, oh, Like, I, I had a moment when they did that. I was like, oh, I miss Candy. So yeah. But yeah, they came and showed out and they won all their, their awards and got all the tens across the board. Tell me why old boy was mad. He was like, that's a lie. 
especially when it came to his category. They said that uh, Electra and whoever else did better than him, and he ended up getting a nine or a couple of nines. And he tried to read the person who gave the nine, and apparently they got like a lazy eye or something, or a crossed eye. He really was trying to read them. And I was like, oh my gosh, please don't do this. So anyway, since um, Blanca was unable to meet old boy's parents because of that situation, because Cubby passed away, uh, he ended up showing up after they ate. They were eating somewhere, celebrating their win, and he showed up. Nobody had seen this man before. Didn't nobody know what was They was looking like, hop on who this man is going on, y'all. And so he rolled up and was like, is there room for one more? And she was like, sure. And everybody was like, well, who, who, who is this? What's going on? Man, they started kissing down. And everybody was like, oh, my. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was like, oh, my, myself. But, yeah, y'all, they ended up doing that. And uh, they was like, yeah, you might as well go ahead and buckle up because we finna ask you a whole bunch of questions. You might as well go ahead and get some food in you. So another thing that was discussed between, uh, I was about to say MJ Rodriguez, which is Blanca's real name. Uh, but anyway, Blanca and Nurse Judy were discussing the fact that she should try to go to school. And she was like, I could barely read in school. I could barely do anything in school. I had to drop out because... I was dyslexic. Like, I, everything just looks crazy to me. And so she was like, you really should become a nurse. Like, you were amazing with these patients. Well, at the end of the episode, she actually went to a community college and got a packet and application and filled it out. So we're going to see where it goes. Hopefully, she gets where she wants to go. Anyway, that was the recap review for Pose. If you like this video, please thumbs it up for me. I will be back with the second episode I'll see y'all in a little while. Bye.